हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक सो विदाउट एनी डिले लेट स्टार्ट दी वीडियो अ सिंगल सेल प्रोटीन और एससीपी इज एन एडिबल प्रोटीन व्हिच इज डिराइव्ड फ्रॉम द प्योर माइक्रोबियल मोनोकल्चर और समटाइम द सेल कल्चर ऑफ डिफरेंट माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म मींस इन जस्ट सिंपल वर्ड्स यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द सिंगल सेल प्रोटीन आर द माइक्रोब्स which you eat for the purpose of getting the proteins from them means in which you just eat a microbial monoculture or you can say a single type of microorganism and sometime different microorganism can also be eaten for the purpose of getting proteins so that kind of food or you can say when the microorganism they use as a food for the requirement of protein then these are called as single cell protein the name scp is a widely accepted as these microorganism majority or you can say majorly sprawl and develop as filamentous structures human as well as animals can use this extracted proteins from this biomass as a supplements so simply single cell protein are the proteins of microorganisms or sometime you can directly eat that microbes or you can either remove the edible protein from these microorganisms and utilize them so first let's discuss like what are the microorganisms which can be used for single cell protein production so they may be bacteria yeast fun, fungus and algae in case of bacteria methylophilus methyltrophus pseudomonas fluorescens cellulomonas alkali genes bacillus megatherium lactobacillus these are generally used while in case of yeast candida lipolytica and saccharomyces cerevisiae is used in case of other fungus fusarium phenarocheta chrysosporium and mushrooms are used for the scp production and algae like chlorella species spirulina species and chondrus crispus they are generally used for the production of single cell proteins next the what are the different steps for the production of single cell protein so for the single cell protein the pure microbial culture it needs a good source of nitrogen and sufficient quantity of carbohydrates and other nutrient means we have to provide microorganism the good source of nitrogen carbohydrates and other nutrients which are required for their growth so that we can cultivate them following steps are generally used for the production like first suitable strain needed to be selected means first we have to select the suitable strain from which we are going for the culture or cultivation and from which we will extract the edible protein second fermentation of microorganism means after selecting the strain we perform the fermentation means we give all the conditions for the growth of microorganism like we provide the microorganism with media we also maintain the ph optimum ph and optimum temperature so that the microorganism it grow very well in under these condition in the next step the harvesting is done in the proper condition as i told means conditions like temperature ph and other nutrients or aeration they should be they should be properly maintained for the harvesting of these microorganism then sometime the post harvest treatment also given to the microorganisms and finally the single cell protein it is you can say it is processed to make this biomass edible so that we can eat this biomass so it undergo some processing which are known as the single cell protein processing so that it can be made edible so chosen microorganism it is introduced into culture medium under the favorable conditions and after breeding the biomass can be processed for the usefulness so means by these steps we can produce the single cell protein now discuss about the advantages of single cell proteins so first the growth of microorganism are usually very high means some microorganism they can even double within 30 minutes or you can say every 30 minutes so as the growth rate is high so we can get the plenty of food or plenty of proteins from them second advantage that microorganism they are easily or you can very easily 
modified genetically as compared to plants and other animals they can be very easily modified so that the modified proteins can be also produced and next the microorganism they have a high protein content and the nutritional value of the protein produced by them is very good means they are a very rich they have very rich content of protein next the microorganism they can be grown in the vast number in relatively small continuous fermentation process means in a small area or you can say small continuous process a large number of microorganisms they can be grown so this is one of the advantage and also this growth is independent of climate because we are providing all the conditions within that fermenter so independent of climate also and the next advantage is that the microorganism they can grow on the wide range of raw material which are particularly very low value waste and some can also use the plant derived cellulose also means these microorganisms they can grow on the very wide range of material which are also very low cost sometimes the very low value waste and the cellulose which is derived from the plant can also be used for their propagation next it also have some disadvantages like due to the restricted capacity of degrading nucleic acid the single cell protein consumption can be harmful for human means this microorganism they have the very limited or restricted capacity of the degrading nucleic acid so their consumption can be harmful for the humans also means it can cause the severe gastrointestinal problem next disadvantage is that the scp it can cause the allergic reaction to some humans means which have a sensitive digestive system or if their body refuse to recognize this biomass so they can also cause allergic reactions to that kind of peoples and a high content of you can say high content of nucleic acid it also lead to increase in the uric acid level in the blood of the individual who is consuming these scps and next is the regular consumption of the single cell protein can also lead to the development of gout or you can say the kidney gout and kidney stain and certain skin reaction are also noticed after their consumption means after some consumption some skin reaction were also reported and lastly due to the requirement of high end machinery the production cost of this single cell protein is also very much high so these are the some disadvantages associated with the production of single cell protein So that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very much